this afternoon, we're going to do something a little different. Last year, you got to experiment with different kinds of raku firing. We got the nice shiny coppers and the mats and this multicolored sand doing all their things, horsehair firing. This year, we're going to try something a little different. This is called Sager firing, and you'll notice that there are large areas of uh, blushes and smoky gray areas and some really, really neat little uh, crystals and things happening. When we take our pots, we're going to wrap them with wire and string that's been soaked into an iron compound and uh, natural uh, Spanish moss that's been soaked in salt water. We've also got some real stinky um, that we got from the, um, the, Publix. The, the public store up there. And, it, and seaweed works really well because it has salt in it. So we can take seaweed like this. And we can, oh my god, it stinks and it's smelly, but we can just sort of put it on here and stick it on there. And I'm going to put it on Sylvia's because she wanted it on her pot, so I'm going to put it on here. Underneath this feather, and I get it a little bit there, sort of glued down. Could I have a little more there, please? Assistant, thank you, nurse. And we'll take a little bit here and we'll stick this on here like that. So we're going to use um, um, copper wire. This is a curly cake that's been expanded, and I broke parts of it open so there's raw parts of the pot showing. And we've got spray in a clot like this, where we can, when normally we can spray it. We'll get this working, and we're going to put sawdust, and there's salt crystals here on my hands. It's pickling salt or ice cream making salt. Um, we've got, um, don't tell anybody about the trade names, but in here is copper sulfate. And uh, it's uh, used for fertilizer, and it's got this lovely greeny blue color. And when it comes out in the pot, and it's successful in the pot, we get these beautiful blemishes of pink. Mm. Now, you wouldn't believe it, but that's what happens, is the pink. Now, put pink on mine. Okay, we can put some pink on yours. So, we've got Sue's pot here, so we can take a little bit of this, and I think I'm going to just sprinkle it on the inside like that, a little bit on the rim. And when I put the sawdust on Sue, yep. it'll also be on there. And I want to stick some old banana peels oh. on here, like this, yeah. like that. And you see these are the palm leaves I swiped from the things there, but up north you can use uh, maple leaves. Actually, we actually get maple leaves actually leave an impression on the pots. You can use anything. So down here in Florida we don't have any composting, so this is a good place to make use of your compost. So we can stick these in here too like that, and, and they'll be all folded up and they'll bend in. And we're not going to worry too much about that. I have chunks of wood, so there's cedar, a little bit of plywood. So we'll find ways of uh, sticking that in the pots too, and we'll stick some in here, and they'll burn. And I've got pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my able-bodied assistant here to get the masking tape, please. And I want you to sort of wrap tape all around any way you can to sell tape. Look. All right, so we're going to put that in there like that. How are we going to work if it's all we can take it and we can spray it with these different things. Yeah, yeah, why not? It'll go in the side of it. We'll put a little bit of that in there, like this. And we'll get a little bit of this one here. And these are just uh, chemical. I should have rubber gloves on. In your uh, studios, you should be practicing safety. Go easy safety. with the iron. And, uh, it's strong. And you should be wearing rubber gloves. And these masks, if you're going to be dealing with uh, other kinds of compounds, uh, like uh, manganese and stuff like that, if you're crazy enough to use it, make sure you're wearing a mask. Because it is toxic. We're not using manganese. If we're if we're spraying, we really should go ahead and now, do that. Normally with a Sager pot, you take this composition and you take a container that's made of the clay. Whether you made it yourself or you've gone to the local um, uh, nursery and bought a clay pot that you plant things in. They're just earthenware clay. So I could set this in a clay pot with a lot more chunks of wood and sawdust and uh, chips of wood and stuff like that. But what we've discovered is that if you take something like this and you get the newspaper, oh, so it's really just right. newspaper strips that's been dipped in uh, clay. And what I'm doing is I'm going to um, wrap the whole pot in the newspaper and the clay, and I'm making a shell. Or if I could say so, if it doesn't confuse you with the techniques, it's like making a cast on a broken arm. Or paper mache, That's it. or paper mache, more Spanish moss, and I'm going to tuck some Spanish moss in here amongst. That's a little bit of a big chunk there, but it doesn't matter where it goes on here as long as it's in the container or the cast or the paper mache, because what we're going to do is make like a a whole piñata, 
you know, it's going to be inside, you know, it's not candy, it's going to be a pot wrapped in all the uh, burnable combustible materials. Um, touching the pot that might help make a, like a resisting pattern. And so we're just going to continue doing this all the way around, like that. When that casing dries, it'll, it'll dry just like a layer of clay, hard clay. And that's going to be taken carefully and put in the raku kiln next Monday. And we'll fire the out the side, like the outside of the, a piñata or a cast. The casing is really just the clay itself. Yes, and it's just going to be holding the, everything else inside. So all that stuff's going to burn in there. And it's going to trap the, all the smoke and the burning stuff and the chemicals we put in there. And we don't know how they're going to turn out. On the next day, when the pots are cool, we're going to take them out and we're going to break off this casing of clay and discover we'll what's all in my hands. Inside. It's just a uh, low fire clay that's been mixed in a bucket um, with some water and some sodium silicate. I make my own. But in your case, if you're going to be doing this in a workshop situation, just go to the local uh, ceramic supply store and get a small pot or small container of uh, slip that they use for pouring their molds, because that's all this is basically, only oh. I've made it myself. So um, sodium silicate, a little bit, and uh, I go like grandma does. I take a handful, half a cup, throw it in a container. If I think it needs more, I throw a little bit more in. It's easier to go and buy it. But this is just liquid clay. And Sylvia wants to put some more um, on the surface of this, and we can take larger pieces of paper now and wrap it around and make it like uh, wrap the whole thing so it's all encased in a layer of clay. Now, what are you going to put in here? Whatever you want. We've got sawdust, we've got string and rope that's been soaked in an iron compound, and the iron compound is actually iron sulfate. Um, so we use uh, things like iron sulfate and uh, uh, cobalt sulfate and cobalt carbonate and uh, copper carbonate and you can use the oxides too but they don't really work quite as well they are a little harder to uh, uh, melt and to fume and to color the pots. You put some stuff in the middle of the pot how will that affect the outside of the pot? It will, I'm hoping those chunks of wood will continue to burn a little longer than the other stuff, yeah. so they all add to the smoky environment. Okay. They don't uh, add smoky. Well, they don't we're add. making a fancy piece of uh, porcelain pottery with this delicate blue design on it. You don't want blemishes of brown, blue, yellow, red, etc. So what they did was they would take a pot, decorate it, glaze it, and put it inside of another cylinder, another pot with a lid on it. And they would take all of those, and those things were called sagers, and they would take them and stack them in the kiln. So no piece of pottery, pristine porcelain, was left in the kiln by itself. It's always in a container. This is what we're doing, is we're making a container. But we're not trying to keep it pristine. Instead of keeping all of the contaminants out, we're adding contaminants to it. To cause the beautiful effects. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, some put those old crummy uh, banana leaves in there. I brought... I brought uh, coffee grinds from my coffee this morning. They can be sprinkled in. So I, I'm going to put those in the inside of, uh, of uh, Sylvia's pot, like this, and of uh, these things. And, and Sue, this is where I'm hoping that they will continue to burn okay. and uh, smoke. And whatever's in the coffee will also, most of the natural ingredients you find, that's why I use leaves from the garden and stuff like that, they all, all have chemicals in them. Now, did you put wax on that? Finish ah, it with that? Very good. And Just like we did with the horse hair. Yeah. yeah. And when your pot's clean then we and dry, then we can uh, wax it or seal it is a better word rather than waxing. Going to 1750 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we get that up to the temperature in about an hour, just like in a raku firing. Then we shut off the, the propane and we let it sit for about 24 hours. Now in the next hour and a half, two hours, three hours as the kiln's starting to cool down, all of that stuff's volatile, still volatile in there. And what happens to a lot of these chemicals and stuff is they, they don't really melt. That's why I hesitated a little bit earlier when I was talking to you. They actually dissipate. Uh, they, they, they fume. They, they break down and change state from a solid to a gas and it sometimes we hope that, that causes fuming and gives you those gorgeous soft colors on the side of your pot. Sometimes they act on the string, the wire, the leaves or whatever else there and they uh, will give concentrated areas of color. 
Sometimes they'll form like little crystals on the surface of the pot, depending on how they went in. That's why people like to use real natural seaweed. I thought that if we um, got it wet, it would be flexible yeah. and would adhere to the pot a little better. Because it's like a, a very fine paper when you get it, you know, how they put it in the sushi. So that wouldn't have gone around your pot, it would have crumbled, I think. Yes. So we're going to try both. We'll do some more experimentations and stuff. Now, if you don't want to deal with this slippery, slidey, slimy clay stuff here that we are, because it is a mess. Look at it. It's awful. And I couldn't get, I was having trouble getting some sawdust underneath and everything. That's why I used the uh, Spanish moss, because I was able to hold it on and Sylvia was able to wrap it up. But if you don't want to go through all this stuff, go down to Winn-Dixie. And they've got a huge display outside of their place on big skids of earthenware pots. So, if that's your pot head and you wanted to do it, pick it up. You'll get that size in your head, and you'll go down to Winn-Dixie and you'll buy a pot. Larger than that, so you can put all the stuff but in there. But it's not then, totally encased like that. But you'll that put a lid on. We're oh, going to put, put, we'll put, put a lid on it. Okay. And then we can make a lid of this stuff here, or we can take a piece of clay, we can take a kiln shelf, anything at all to make a lid on it. But the beautiful thing about getting that little pot from Winn-Dixie is, you can line the bottom with sawdust. Or wood oh, chips, okay. or chunks so of um, vegetation. Before you put this in. Before you yeah. set it in. And then you've got more freedom to decorate the top surface with wires or chunks of things. Like, see, we're going to have a heck of a time wrapping that up. So a combination of sticking it in, a, in a, um, an earthenware pot with sawdust, because that will leave a really, really black bottom. We, found, we find that the pot sitting in just... A nice fine sawdust smolders and smokes away and gives you one of the most beautiful rich black bottoms you can possibly ever imagine. And then all of a sudden you get all this open airy space with the wire and the string and that stuff will all interact differently. So you got a big heavy black bottom coming up to textured fumed surfaces. Okay? I understand. So, the question, so like on this one when you have a lid, do you want to fire it with a lid on Yes. It? Yes, please. So what I would do with that, if it's not my case, I'd make sure the string went through or the wire went through. Mm -hmm. So that you, and I'd go up and over the lid and then down the side. And that's how you'll know where the lid fits on the pot because you'll have lines. It okay. will come out as lines on your pot. Mm -hmm. now, and you want them to be continuous yeah, onto your lid. And that's All a the perfect effects. time. For, because see, one of the hardest part of things about pottery is knowing how your lid fits on your pot. And the easiest way is to take a little bead or button and put it at the top of your lid and the side of your pot. And that's the way you know your lid always goes. Here's a perfect time to let the material and the chemicals and the, the, the process, process di dictate what the design is. And I'm going to put it here. Susan's going to put the lid on. You're going to see flames and fire. Then Ed's going to time it two minutes. Then Lenore, you're going to get down the hole of the container, and Sue's going to burp it. But Sue's, gonna... Sue's not going to jam that on. No. So she just that can be burped. Just set it on. Yeah. Just so okay. Sonoma will have to hold that container. Yeah. It'll have to be held. All right. I, I experimented this, this morning. Yeah. Three times. Just, just be ready. Okay. Here we go. Hot hot kettle. Red hot pot. You notice how ugly black it is. Now. Let it burn. Now. Let it burn. Let it burn. Go. Lid off. Watch it fl flash. Jesus. Watch it flash. Whoa. Whoa. Put, it back, put okay, it back on. Put it back on. Once it flashes, it's supposed tight. to be on. Oh, I didn't take the Now what? Now tight. That's it. <laughs> Did you see the colors on that? Was yeah. that unbelievable? Isn't that lovely? And you saw how ugly black it was. Oh, yeah. Can I need my fish like that? Yes, you can do your fish like that. Now, we won't know whether those colors stay. Okay, um, let's get out of here. The pot is hot, obviously. It was 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's sitting in that paper, and it's starting to burn, and it's smoldering. But there's no oxygen in there. So it's not burning. It's just smoldering. When we open it up, it's the reintroduction of oxygen, and that's where the flames happen. With the flames dancing on the surface, we're getting those colors, the golds, the greens, the blues, and there was some purple. Now, whether they stay, we don't know. That's when we put the lid back on again trap all oxygen, stop all the burning, and we hope the effect that it had in that split second is there forever. And this is his form, John Kellum, and he shared this technique with us. A bunch of us were up at a workshop in uh, North Florida in the fall, and he shared it with us. I said I was going to do it with our students in Maple Leaf. So that's his technique. On, um, after we did our raccoon firings the other day, we took our um, Sager pieces that were wrapped in the clay, 
and we put them in here and we hung around and waited for about an hour and a half for the kiln to get up to 1750 degrees Fahrenheit. Then we shut everything down, covered the holes as best we could, so it just sat all night. And the next morning when we checked it, it was still about four or five hundred degrees. Now this morning, we're going to open it up. Are you ready? Oh, ready. Sure. Okay. ready. Go for it. Ta -da. Ta -da. Now, come and see, come and see, come and see. Some, wow. some of the casting papers have broken away. Some of them look like they're really quite firm. Does anybody know who this is? I think no. this one's We have mine. no idea. Okay, we have no idea. Mine. But you see, this is quite solid. Now, now wow. take them out, put them all on the table, please. And if you can find yours, you may start breaking. Now, let, let us see one taken apart at a time. The copper wire has left some green marks, some black marks. And there's some lovely oranges on here. Did you notice that all of the um, the pieces of wood and stuff that were put in have all burnt away to an ash? Okay. Oh my God! Hope that's gorgeous. Oh yay! Woohoo! What a beautiful piece! Ta -da! Beautiful. Hey, keep past. Fire there and stuff like that. So that's I think really. We have to undo them here. Okay, we are you ready for the next one? There's an opening in your broken piece. Uh -huh. That might have been. The opening would probably cause pure carbon to get in there. Okay, this looks messy. like it was um, over a berry bowl. Well done. Well done. Well done. And they'll be uh, enhanced with a special stone enhancing uh, material. Look at all the beautiful oranges in this, here. Who's this Can you see the bottom? Wow, we look at that color. Yeah, but if I sit it on the table. <laughs> yeah. What, you know, just take your time. Do one lovely, time lovely, lovely, fantastic first time. If you let the slip, contact your pot. Remember, it's it's wet clay, and it will actually bit fire. But overall, we've got some phenomenal results. Now, we're going to be asked, where did this come from? Where did that come from? It's very difficult to tell, but you can see where the wire was. And you can tell because there's um, black lines and uh, they've turned green in some places because of the copper. The uh, pink blemish usually comes from copper um, carbonate that's been sprinkled on. Oh, that's the fertilizer? The fertilizer, it was a sulfate, will uh, give us blues and turquoises. I think that's where this has come from. I think. The big black areas where where the shell that you made with the slip broke open during the firing and the smoke and uh, the, all the stuff that's in the kiln burning away. Remember, we leave it in there at 1750 degrees for 24 hours. For the first two or three hours it's in there, everything is burning and it's full of smoke. And smoke, carbon, goes right into the pot. So some of these that have a lot of black, the smoke actually got into the pot. do is try just putting them in ordinary water and using our hands and maybe those scrubbies that Muriel and Bob gave us just a lightly. The green ones? Yeah, the green ones. And just lightly knock off any of the rough There's stuff. Also Let them dry thoroughly and we're ordering a special sealer called the Ager. And they use it in stone carving. And it gives you a nice soft um, uh, finish to the pot. And we'll protect them from your hands from the oil and uh, oil from your hands and grease and dust and stuff in the house and just so thank you for being our guinea pigs. Oh.